tracking conversions with Calendly when it's embedded within your website. So I'm gonna go through how it can be done, what are the common pitfalls, and why the usually recommended methods actually do not work at all. Two methods to do it and going kind of through my setup on how to technically implement the best method. Okay, first things first. Uh, now there might be a little bit of repetition if you watch some other videos, but this is super important. So here we have our Calendly demo website. Inside it we have our Calendly widget. So the first important thing to realize is that the Calendly is a different website than your main website. So even though it looks like it's part of your website, it's really not. We can actually check the URL from here and see that it's just a window to another website. So what this means is that when someone clicks on a Google ad or Facebook ad or your newsletter, email newsletter and lands on your website, Calendly doesn't know where they came from. And that's kind of the most important information, although a lot of other useful information is missing also. So your website knows where they came from. Calendly doesn't know where they came from. So if you send the conversion event from Calendly to Google Ads or Google Analytics, it's missing that most important information. So it's actually perfectly useless. So what we can do is listen for messages from Calendly if you're on a free plan. So we can write a code here that's going to wait until we hear that a conversion has happened. In our website, we listen for a mes message from the uh, Calendly iframe, and then we send the conversion information. However, that works on the free plan of Calendly, so it's kind of nice, but it's missing important uh, parameters like price of booking or name of the event and the email, which is important for Google Ads enhanced conversions. A lot of things to cover here. This is quite a technical thing. Okay, so with this setup uh, where we do not have an external thank you page, but we do it just on the page, we can't get all of the important useful information. So now I'm, I'm going to show you the best method. And the best method relies on external thank you page, but it's not like the ad other tutorials which are mis missing an important part. So let's take a look. First of all, you have your Calendly event, and for the confirmation page, check uh, redirect after, after confirmation, redirect to external site, and here I just made a demo site uh, or demo page on my test page. Very important to check the past event details. What does this do? Well, basically, it's going to pass the details like the email, the booking appointment name, appointment price, name of the person who booked it to the URL. So after this, we have in the URL that information which we can then use. So uh, let's take a look at this here. So for example, now here I have done a Calendly booking and I'm on a demo thank you page. And what we can see here is, you know, the thank you page, blah, blah, blah. And after this question mark, we got all kinds of information. We got uh, event name, event date, event time. We even get the email and the name of the person who booked it. And these are really important for the conversion, especially Google Ads enhanced conversion, which is the best way to make conversion tracking in 2023. Other tutorials miss this completely. So now I'm gonna go through my Google Tag Manager setup to explain how I have built this. Again, this is quite technical, but this is the best I can do. All right, so first of all, well, we need a custom HTML tag uh, in Google Tag Manager. And here we are qu querying the custom parts from the URL, like the name, the email, all this, all this stuff. And we are then 
setting them as data layer. Uh, well, I don't know what you call this. We are making data layer variables from them in the next step, but we are running a custom event. This is to make sure that we are not sending the conversion information until we have all this required information. So we are running a event. So this will be our trigger for any conversions we are running. We get the price, uh, appointment type name, email, first name, last name, full name. Great. And this is being triggered on our custom thank you page. So I'm using page view and, and I'm using page path contains whatever your custom thank you page is. You could also uh, use um, contains. Oh yeah, I'm using contains, but if you have multiple, you know, you could have thank you and then you can thank you one and thank you two and thank you custom, custom and whatever uh, for your page, not here. He, here you will all, only use uh, the thank you. All right, so this is our trigger and this is kind of the thing that parses all that custom information. So this is kind of our main tag. Then for the variables, I have a couple of data layer user defined variables. So for example, uh, the last name, and we are just copying these from the tag I just showed you. And I'm just naming them data layer dot last name, etc. So with these, we can then send the Google ads enhanced conversion information for the email, possibly a phone number and the name. Perfect. Then we have a custom event. So we are waiting to get the custom event that we added to the data layer in our kind of previous step, the main uh, tag I showed as the first thing. So now that we go to the tag assistant and we refresh the page, we can kind of see that first of all, our Calendly thank you page uh, Page should be fired. Oh, uh, is there something weird going on here? Did I? Ref okay, I think I did a re refresh or something. Either way, um, we can see that the data layer variables are being set up correctly. We are not using first name or last name. We are using the full name here. All right, so, so with this kind of setup, we could now create something like a new tag. We could create a Google Ads conversion track, for, for example. And for this one, we can then use our, our variables from the data layer from our kind of custom, uh, custom version from these event details that we parsed in, in our tag here. So with this one, we can then add the conversion value to be the Calendly conversion price. And if we um, check the include user provided data from your website for the enhanced conversion tracking, which I definitely recommend, we can create a new variable and for the email, for example, we can now actually get the calendar email. Uh, and okay, for the name, we might need to edit Calendly to use the first name, last name, or add a little bit of JavaScript to split the full name to the uh, first and last. Uh, it's also possible to use the same logic to add custom kind of questions to Calendly. And then we could, you know, ask for their city or street or country or, or any of this information if we like. And then, use this information to create more data layer variables and then send even more accurate conversion tracking to 
Google Ads, for example. So the custom answers are also here available, just like uh, all the other information. So, okay, to recap. Um, first of all, if you're new to web development, conversion tracking, analytic stuff, I kind of feel bad for you because this is a very, very, very complex setup for a, for a beginner. So um, hopefully this was useful. Just to recap, two ways to track conversions. We can either just, you know, listen for a message that's coming from here, but we can't get any of the important stuff like the price, email, all that stuff. And also we might want to have a custom thank you page just because it's a nice experience and it looks very pretty. So simple version for free version of Calendly can be done uh, here. But if we want the best professional setup, then we must use a redirect, pass the event details, and then parse those event details as data layer variables inside Google Tag Manager, send an event to the data layer, and this will be our uh, custom event that's going to trigger any of the tags we want to send, whether it's Google Analytics 4 event, the old Universal Analytics event, Metapixel event, Google Analytics, co I'm sorry, Google Ads conversion, or, you know, multiple different Google Ads conversions, depending on the appointment type or such. All right, very complex setup. Here's how to do it. This is the best way. The other tutorials, um, they can kind of get you halfway there. Most of the tu tutorials, I sa I'd say, they get you like the C minus, you know, 50% of the full setup. But I think I, I have currently the only setup that does the whole thing. And that was kind of the reason I wanted to create this blog post and this tutorial. If you need help, I am available for hire. So get in touch. And I can just, you know, do all this conversion tracking for you if you feel like you're banging your head against the wall. Thank you so much for watching and indeed feel free to get in touch.